Fortunately, I've always been quite academically inclined and, and quite an overachiever. And, you know, I, after having done articles within the firm and having had quite good ratings during articles, I shortly thereafter was asked to join the technical department where I specialized in corporate governance. And I think that was really my journey into governance. You know, people sometimes get surprised and they say, you're a chartered accountant, but you don't do any accounting. And I think that's just, for me, that's the beauty of the Chartered Accountant qualification and designation because really it, it enables you to apply your mind to almost any situation and, and any kind of job that gets thrown at you, you know. I, I was lucky enough to have had a relationship with the then CEO of the Institute of Directors um, and had sent my CV through just, you know, looking for options outside of the firm structure and that hierarchy within the firm. Um, I also at the time had had two young children and I was looking for some work-life balance and, and flexibility in my, in my career. And I was lucky enough to have received an offer from the Institute of Directors. I started there as a senior governance specialist, so really around all matters to do with corporate governance, but specifically thought leadership. So it was papers and articles around corporate governance and how you know corporate governance can be helping business people out there. Corporate governance is about not only effective leadership but also ethical leadership and I think ethical leadership is the core to why we've seen some of the things that we've seen of, of recent times and therefore it's so important that corporate governance plays a role in now going forward in leaders standing up and saying not on our watch we will not do this you know it, it's about doing the right thing now and I think, you know, not only corporate governance, but for any professional out there, be it a chartered accountant, being, be it a director, it's about saying, you know, these are the rules within which we operate. And, and there's no kind of gray areas for us in terms of doing the right thing. You know, if you read King 4, there are 16 principles of good corporate governance, and I won't reiterate them all, but I think core for me is the board's role in setting strategy and then overseeing that that strategy is implemented effectively, you know, in ensuring legitimacy of an organization. And that's, I think, the most pertinent one here because we see what's happened to organizations where they've lost legitimacy, where they've lost stakeholder trust. And it's really the role of the board to maintain that stakeholder trust in an organization. So I guess some of the challenges are, you know, you can never draft a code that's going to make everybody happy. Um, you know, there were members who were involved in some of the working groups where their area of passion was a certain topic and they wanted us to delve into that topic in King 4 and, and put all sorts of rules in place etc around that and you know that was a challenge because we had to take a step back and say what are the non-negotiables that organizations should be looking at without being too prescriptive because the minute you're too prescriptive you don't give wiggle room to an organization they, they therefore it's a paint by numbers solution and it doesn't work because organizations need flexibility, they need to apply governance in a manner that makes sense for their organization and is going to benefit their organization. Highlights um, was the actual launch of King4. I mean, what a phenomenal event. I mean, I still, when, when I get my Facebook memories of it, I still can tear up sometimes when I remember that. And then I think post that, it's just been the, the acclaim around it, the international interest in King4. You know, when we get queries from all around the world around why we chose to do things the way we did around the philosophies that we've implemented in King 4. It really makes you proud that this was a proudly South African project and product that we really should be fly flying the flag high with. You know, I think the Institute of Directors is an organization, it's a non-profit company. The King Committee by comparison is, a, is purely a committee of individuals. So the IODSA is the organization that set up the King Committee uh, many, many years ago and asked Mervyn King to, to chair the committee back then. So since then we've always um, acted as secretariat of the committee itself and as owner of the codes that, that are produced by the committee. We have influence over our members, so the members of the institute and we have around 9,000 of them. So it's really about you know, spreading the word around good governance and the value of the code through our members, but also through media and other exposure that we can get for the code. You know, and then secondly, it's about also our relationships with stakeholders in the public sector, like National Treasury, like DPSA, like DPE, and having those conversations with those bodies because they are the ones who can actually implement regulations within the sector. 
chartered accountants, for example, have a certain status with achieving that designation CA, SA. And in order to practice as a CFO, generally, you will need to be a chartered accountant. But in South Africa at the moment, in order to practice as a director, there are no requirements of minimum standards of education or experience or designation, etc. And that's why we're trying to encourage our designations of certified director and chartered director to be as you know, widespreadly known as the CASA designation is for this is our stamp of approval of, on these individuals. They are competent directors and they're going to make a difference and add value on your board. I've always been a perfectionist, so it's really about being the best CEO that I can be. It's about motivating and driving my team. You know, I often tell them, and they get a little bit scared, I often tell them, you're all going to need to join me in the fast lane now, you know. So it's about getting them all really in that mode of performance, you know, and, and that's something I'm really looking forward to. I guess the other thing is, is just I've always proven myself, you know, I'm a youngish Indian female in a world, competing in a world with, where it's predominantly males out there as CEOs and it's really one to show them that I can, you know, I'm as capable as anyone else. Um, you know, I'm also the mother of two children and I mentioned it to you and one of the key kind of values of, that I have personally is to have that balance of, of being a mother and a, and a wife and still being a career woman in a fast-paced industry. And, and I believe that I can and I have so far managed to balance those two where I'm actually very involved still with my children, with my home and, and I, I'm one of those multitaskers who there's not enough hours in the day but, but I managed to put everything in and, and I suppose that's key for me to keep, keep that going. Um, advice I guess is just be yourself. You know I get asked by so many women out there who want to join boards you know, what do they need to do? And, and I always tell them, the reason we want more women on boards is not because we want women who, who, we don't want you to act like men. We don't want you to start thinking you need to behave like men to climb the corporate ladder and be on boards. The very reason that we hoping to have more women on boards is to have that balance because women are just different to men. It's not about one gender being better than the other. It's about complementing each other in a boardroom and in any in any situation actually um, so just you know be yourself be confident work hard I mean I I really 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 do work hard and and you know I'm not I'm not exaggerating that it's about constantly being on the top of my game and and being one step ahead of of the curve of what's happening in my industry